I'm Gloria Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Today we are visiting with our wonderful director here at the Muscovy County Board of Elections and Registration. Nancy Boren, it has been a while. It has been a long time. Thank I you. know. Well, we needed to have this visit. Uh, we've had some changes uh, since the last time you and I were together. Uh, and we don't teach civics in school anymore. And so I just thought it was important that we share information with the community so people will be informed and educated on what they should be doing in 2024 when we come up to the big election cycle. But first I want you to share with all of the people that might not know your fabulous self, how long you have been holding this position because you're not new, you're known all over the state as a subject matter expert. And that's important, I wanna say that because you can speak to the changes and the things that have happened over the years. We've gone from paper ballots to technology and now we have some different requirements. And so you have been in this role and you know the ins and the outs, even the, when the maps change every 10 years with the decennial census. So we're gonna to speak to all of that because we don't wanna leave anybody behind. But just share with our audience how long you've been doing this because you're only 21 so you started as a kid <laughs> I did. Um, so i have been the director of elections here in muskogee county for 28 years really 28 years wow. yes and i like to say i've been around the block a couple of times right it doesn't necessarily mean i'm old but i do have a lot of experience um, seasoned wisdom Correct. Yes. And I have been around the block a couple mm -hmm. of times. And so, right. so different technologies, different requirements, and yes, this new year is going to give us even more. Right. And so in the old days, of course, you're here in the new building and you are located second floor, City Services Center, right here on Macon Road. And so near here is the City Council Chambers. Downstairs is where people buy their tags. Yeah. But in the old days, you were in one of the towers uh, at the old at downtown at the government center. And so you graduated from there to this new location. Yes. So I just want to make sure we're telling people, you know, where you are, how they can find you, because we want them to do what? Find you now before we get to the 13th hour. That's right. And you have all of the questions that you can answer all of the questions. And if you don't know, you can find it out. That's right. Right. We are at 3111 Citizens Way. It's right between the school district building and the library. Okay. We've been here for about nine years. Right. So we've been here quite some time. Right. And we also vote early here. So if you vote early and want to vote early, this is a precinct. Okay. And that's downstairs. It is. Okay. So for our new people, we have a lot of military people coming in or people might be coming in with new corporations and things like that. So we want to make sure that everybody's informed. Well, your staff is fabulous. They're seasoned people. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been with you for a long time and that's important too. And they are well trained and they are very patient and memorable people. Now, how do I know that? Because I'm the person that will show up in here and I want, you know, information on uh, voter registration and, and things like that because we always want to make sure we are reaching everyone no one is left behind and so they're very they're just great about that but since um the last big election cycle which is the presidential that's every four years we had a decennial census we did. every 10 years so when the census is done sometimes the maps adjust and so people need to know in the event they might have been in what one voting district prior to the 2020 census they might be in a dis different one based on how the lines were moved that's right so we redo the districts whether it's state representative or state senator or school board mm -hmm. or council based on population right and population shifts mm -hmm. over 10 years and so every 10 year years that population is looked at and then those districts are carved out to make them relatively equal. Right. So that school board district one and school board district three are representing about the same number of people mm -hmm. at the time of redistricting. Right. And so that was done
done in 2021 and 2022 on the federal level, the state level, and the local level. Mm -hmm. um, school board and council were both redistricted as well as uh, our state senators and our state rep. Right. So, who so my, some of those numbers changed yes. uh, because state representative Calvin Smyre, who has retired, he had that same number forever since I was a girl in college. That's right. Then now that's a different number. It is. And so people need to be familiar with that if they live in that district and they don't show up at the polls looking for something on the ballot that's not there because right. the number changed. That's right. And right. the best way to find that is my voter page. If you don't want to call here to the elections office, uh -huh. you go to my voter page, you put in your first initial, last name, date of birth and your county of residence, uh -huh. and it pulls up all of your district information, your district representatives, your precinct, um, your registered address, any information that you would like to see as a voter. Okay, and so that's the Secretary of State, my voter page. It's actually managed through the statewide voter registration system that okay. each registrar in all 159 counties um, enters information into okay. and it's just managed or housed. Okay. By the Secretary of State's okay, office. so that's where the big umbrella. Yes. But for some of our seniors that are not so technology sure. proficient, mm -hmm. because I'm a senior, but I'm a different type of senior, uh, many of them were in school when they had typewriters. That's a right. lot of our retired educators, they were not in college with computers and things like that. Yes. So they're not so very comfortable with a lot of that online. But your team, you have yes. a great team. They are here to help them navigate. They are. And if they pick up the phone and call us, give us their information, we will pull up their voter record and we will print off for them their voter record mm -hmm. and we'll seal it up and mail it to them so that they can have a paper copy to look at. They also should have a precinct right. card. Right. And hopefully their precinct card um, they've kept. But if they haven't, mm -hmm. we can always mail them a copy of their district information. Well, we have many, many precinct cards. When you send us ours, I have this little clip on the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and that's where we put it, which we, you know, been voting in, in sure. the same place, but it's just good to have it. It is. And so we just collect them over time because that's, that's important information. Mm -hmm. And in case we have a senior moment one day, you're not really sure where we're supposed to go because we like to early vote. Yes. And if you early vote, you vote here, but that you, when it's election day, you got to go to your assigned precinct. You're right. right. And so that's why we want to make sure we say that. Yes. Well, what we're going to do now, go to our first break to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Straightforward is brought to you by State Senator Ed Harbison, serving the citizens of Georgia's 15th Senatorial District and on the front lines for veterans every day. Progressive Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today. In the compassionate and professional services provided, a touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road, trusted by generations. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm enjoying this very, very important visit with Nancy Boren, our Director of Elections and Registrations. And I want you to pay very close attention. We have had some very important changes since you voted for the president the last time. In 2024, we're going to be having that very big election again. And I say that, and when you watch the numbers, um, a lot of people only vote in presidential. Okay. Uh, a lot of the local races, people don't vote in those. So okay. that's why I'm speaking specifically to that. We usually have a larger turnout, and that's a historical fact. It is. Right. And so we want you now to listen very closely because Nancy's going to share some knowledge that you must have so we don't get to the 13th hour on election day and you're upset because you didn't get the absentee ballot that you thought that you requested there are some things that's a little different so nancy share that with our audience okay on the application for an absentee ballot if you have a georgia driver's license it's mm -hmm. very simple to apply for an absentee ballot you simply fill the Georgia driver's license number into the boxes on the application. The number, if you have a Georgia driver's license, you can you take the number like they do if you're making a purchase in a store or something. Yes. You don't have to make a copy 
if you have the Georgia's driver's license. Right. But if you have another state, then you need to make a copy. Correct. Okay. If it's any other type of ID, then you have to make a copy and you put it here. It says place identification here. You, you check that you do not have a Georgia driver's license and then you can submit that application. So the easiest thing, of course, is uh -huh. if you have a Georgia driver's license, even if it is an expired license. Oh. Some of our expired Georgia license. Right. Some of our elderly drivers in Georgia yes. no longer drive. Right. But if they hold on to that expired Georgia driver's, driver's license, license, they can use that number as their identification for voting. Okay. And that's key. It's the only expired identification that you can use. It's okay. the Georgia license. Because a lot of our seniors, which you know my dad always came in person and voted. Yep. He did. Up until, you know, his last journey at 92 years old, and we came to this very building, yes, uh, and his license had expired because he had stopped driving at 90, mm -hmm. and he was 92. Yes. And so that, you were able to use it checking in. Mm -hmm. So the only, one more time, the only expired is for our Georgia driver's license. And a lot of our seniors who no longer drive, that they can use that because it has their picture and all of their information. Correct. Okay. Everything else, though, you need to make a copy of, and you put that copy right here where it says place identification. Okay. The other big, big change, it's on the back of the application. Okay. If you want a ballot automatically and you are either 65 years old or older or disabled, you have to opt in, we call it opting in, okay. to receiving that ballot for every election that year. Okay. So um, 65 or older or disabled can opt in to receive every ballot for the year, but there is not an automatic list that keeps you on that list forever. And I think that's the myth. It is. Uh, we had people calling us for yes. some reason. Of course, people have sure. seen you on our show over the years, yes. and they were confused, some of our mature people. They thought they had signed up forever and it was just going to continue to come. Right. But what you're saying is they have to opt in. That's on the back side of this request. Yes. Right. And if they opt in, that means they will get the absentee ballot every time. For that year. For that year. So yes. whether it's the primary or the general for 2024, they don't have to do it for the primary and then a new one for November. They'll just do it one time for 2024. Yes. Then the next cycle in 2026 or whenever that is, they'll have to do that same request again and opt in yes. for our seniors. I just want to help the seniors. Of course, you know I'm a senior sure. again, but I'm a different <laughs> type of senior. No, and, I, and it's very confusing. It is. And if you're not technology proficient, or if you live alone and you know your children have grown they move on and have their life but if you still want to be a responsible citizen and do your civic duty we want to make sure we inform and educate to make it as simple as we can for them so i think if we remember those things your georgia driver's license if you have it mm -hmm. opting in if you are 65 or older or disabled okay those are two critical things that we want to remember moving forward mm -hmm. and that automatic application is not forever right. it's only an annual application annually yes. okay for that year calendar year that is right okay and so then they will do what fold this up and how, what's the process? You brought a lot of things. I this did. is show and tell, which right. is good. Yes. Yeah. So this is just the application for the absentee ballot. You okay. can either mail it to us, you can fax it to us. You actually, if you're tech savvy, can apply online. But somehow we need to get a copy of this. Mm -hmm. If you can scan it and email it, we can use that also. But we so it doesn't have to be the original? No. Okay, so they can fax it, scan it in, have somebody scan it in. Or, or and they can just email it that way okay so what about the ones that need to use snail mail because that's how they still handle business okay, okay. then we do accept snail mail okay. you have 78 days before an election to apply for an absentee ballot that's the first day that we can accept your application okay the last day that you can apply for an absentee ballot is 11 days before the election, and that's a huge change. Right. We used to be able to apply for an absentee, uh, absentee ballot the Friday before.
before the election on Tuesday. Really? It's now backed it up a whole week. Okay. To 11 days before okay. an election. And so this form is the application to request yes. the absentee ballot. Correct. And then later you will send them the absentee ballot. Yes, we okay. will. Okay. Right. It'll look something like this. Okay. It'll look like this. All right. And so this is the official thing that the United States Postal Service is going to put in their mailbox. Yes. Snail mail. Yes. Okay. And inside of there, we will have these documents. Yes. You will okay. have the official absentee ballot envelope where you will place your voted ballot, mm -hmm. instructions for voting the absentee ballot, and then the most important oath envelope. And we can talk about that if you'd like to do that. Okay. All right. So we want to make sure if we're 65 and older, we want to opt in. We have to do the front and the back. Yes. We have to sign it. Right, because we got people last time, they were doing all of that with the driver's license numbers and all that and forgot to sign it. Mm -hmm. So then that added more work on their part, frustration on their part, and but you were happy yes. to help them work through it. Sure. And some people might have run out of time. Sure. So we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're going to do now, go to our final break to our sponsors and we'll be right back. We'll be right back after work from some of our sponsors. The Law Offices of Siobhan S. Thomas & Associates, 201 Ninth Street in Uptown Columbus, 706-350-7232. A veteran-owned law firm dedicated to equal rights and justice for all. Make Siobhan S. Thomas & Associates your first choice for legal services. Visit SiobhanThomas.com. The Miley Agency, 4903 Armor Road. Gerald L. Miley and William Rip Singer have been providing comprehensive reviews and insuring families in Georgia and Alabama for more than 50 years. The Miley Agency will work nonstop to find you the best policy at the best price. You can rest assured that your information is secure, confidential, and protected. Call today at 706-996-2045. Adjuster Source 101. Sign up today for the Insurance Claims Adjuster Virtual Course. The All Lines license allows an adjuster to work claims in residential, commercial, inland marine, ocean marine, and workers' comp, Georgia property and casualty, Alabama property and casualty, and additional states. For more information, call 470-724-1050 or info at AdjusterSource101.com. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm continuing this very important conversation with Nancy Boren. And we want to make sure that you listen very closely. She's going to go through some very important points. We do not want anyone to feel that they were left behind. Your vote is your voice, but it requires that you follow the rules, and we have to do that. And if we don't follow the rules as they are, then we're not counted. So we wanna make sure that every vote is counted. All right, so we've gone through how we can request mm -hmm. the absentee ballot. You have shown us what the US Postal Service is gonna be bringing yeah. these different things to the house for those that's gonna be using snail mail and our seniors. We don't want you to make sure you know what this looks like. It's not a scam, no one is scamming you. That's so important, we got a lot of scams. Okay, so once you receive that, walk us through that, Nancy. All right, so this is the oath envelope, and this, this is critical. This is how we identify that the ballot came from the vote, voter. It has the voter's information here. Okay. When we receive it, if the voter needs assistance, the person assisting the voter needs to sign here and date it here, and they give a reason for the assistance. It's either the voter's unable to read English or they need assistance because of a disability. They can't right. write. Or so glaucoma. Need, My dad yes. had glaucoma. That's right. right. So he couldn't see it. Right. There mm -hmm. is a checklist here that mm -hmm. tell that asks you, have you read and signed? Have you entered your date of birth? There's a checklist. So I would suggest going through this checklist before you put it in the mail. Okay. And then inside, you are going to find the voter signature, the voter identification number, and date of birth. If you have a Georgia driver's license, again, we want you to put that here. The number. The number only. Right. Do not have to make a copy. 
but the number here, if you have a Georgia driver's license valid or expired, okay, or the last four digits of your social security number, okay, if you do not have either one of those, then you are required to make a copy of an authorized ID, okay, such as a military ID, a passport, mm -hmm. a copy, and you have to put it inside this yellow envelope. The instructions tell you to put it in the envelope, okay. the yellow envelope. Okay. If you put it in the official ballot envelope, we will not know exactly. until election night when we are opening those ballots and your ballot could be rejected right. for lack of ID. Right. So please, if you have to place an ID, put it inside the yellow envelope. It will be sealed in two places. So um, it's secure, it is secure. no one can steal it or anything. So it's still, hold that up so we can look. It has two places where, where it's gonna be sealed. Okay, and so we wanna make sure if someone is helping a senior, if it's the neighbor, someone from the church, grandchild, or an adult child, they need to sign, they do. We want to make sure that we're following all the rules Rules might be uncomfortable, it might they might be inconvenient, but we're gonna follow the rules because we want every person to be uh, represented. That's we right. want every person to be represented. Okay, and so these have to be mailed back at a certain time. I remember you were saying that at one point we used to could do them the Friday before the Tuesday of election. We can't do that anymore. That has changed. It's 11 days now, is that? Right, to fill this form out, right, to request the absentee ballot, it is 11 days before the election. That's it, right. deadline. If you miss that 11 day period, you are either going to have to vote in, in person, person during the last week of early voting mm -hmm. or on election day. Okay. So think to yourself how you wanna vote. If it's gonna be by absentee ballot, you mm -hmm. have to plan. Right. It's gonna be in person or on election day, you have a little more time. Okay. Now, your office is in this City Services Center. This is what? A early voting center only. Right. Don't come here on election day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. That's okay. Don't come here on election day expecting to vote. Mm -hmm. We are not a voting precinct on election day. We are, however, for the three weeks of early voting and early voting site, mm -hmm. but not election day. Okay, so if you have, again, an expired Georgia's driver's license and you want, if you're 65 and older, or you have a disability and you want to ensure that you get the absentee ballots, you have to opt in. Yes. And you will get it for the 2024 voting cycle. Whenever the next cycle is, if it's 2026, you got to request it again. You don't go in a database and stay there forever. So that has to be redone each voting cycle. Yes. Since we had the last big presidential election, we had the results from the decennial census, which is every 10 years. 2010, 2020, there'll be one in 2030. So some of these maps have changed. Yes. Now is the time to find out if your information changed and they can go to my voter page. They can. Those that are technology proficient. Sure. And tell them again all of the information they just need, their name and. It's first initial, last name, mm -hmm. date of birth and county of residence. Okay. So any voter in Georgia can do it. That's very simple. Mm -hmm. And for our seniors, they can reach out to your team, uh, very capable, professional, friendly people, and they're always willing to help the senior citizens. Just have to be a little patient. There's elevators here and there are stairs. Well, stairs don't always work for me. Some days I'm good and not, but they can get on the elevator if they need to have a face-to-face -face because a lot of them still do their business in person. Sure. And so we don't want to leave anybody behind. That's right. Okay, so what are your office hours and 
and if people have a question, who should they be calling? So we are open Monday through Friday, 8 to four, eight to 5. I started to say 8 to 4. Yeah. We're going to cut our hours. Yeah, uh, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh -huh. We're here. Someone's here to answer your questions. Okay. Um, I also answer email. My email is nboren at columbusga.org. nboren at columbusga.org. And I answer those pretty much weekend and holidays. So. I know, right? <laughs> you, are, you are engaging me over the holidays. Know, right. So so, you know. No, that's okay. Because you want to be... Um, resourceful you want to make sure you're providing information you want to be factual you know you're professional I mean and that's that's the right thing to do well I am so very grateful that you would take the time to do this I wanted us to do it far enough in advance I know you know this is we're not in the election cycle that's going to be 2024 but any questions people have if they're not clear on the process this is the time to do it Yes, and that way no one's left behind. That's right. All right. Any parting words? Um, oh, so if you vote early, we have the poll pad printers that print out your absentee ballot application for you. You actually sign on the screen. That's how we were able to process over 30,000 voters and set seven days for the runoff, the last runoff. So mm -hmm. it shortens the process tremendously. And the line moved quickly. Voters, the line moved very quickly. So mm -hmm. if if you don't want to vote by absentee ballot, you can always vote early if you feel comfortable doing that. The great part, you can do it according to your own personal plan, whether it's the absentee ballot, whether it's in person or election day. Many options. Yes. And no one's left behind. That's right. All right. Well, I thank you so much for your hard work for 28 years when you started when you were only two years old. So you're going 30 now. <laughs> but anyway, we appreciate your hard work, long hours election time and you you and your team you all are head and shoulders above the rest and we thank you so much thank you i appreciate it all right this has been straightforward if you don't stand for something you will fall for anything until next time what up world what's up columbus be sure to tune in every sunday straightforward with gloria stroll right here on nbc 38